r slash ask reddit. People who have had friends stab you in the back, what is the story? Made plans to go see a movie with my friends for my 16th birthday and planned it weeks in advance. Everybody bailed the day before of but I decided to still go see the movie. Ran into my whole group of friends leaving the movie theater while buying popcorn. I had one friend who honestly wasn't my favorite person because she was really manipulative. But I never said anything bad about her. I found out that she had been shit talking me to all of our mutual friends and telling them all that I did horrible things that I never did. Ended up essentially being pushed out of that entire friend group and it ruined a lot of my high school experience. We, my husband and I, had a friend that we helped get back on his feet. Paid off some tickets he had. Got his license reinstated. Booked him up with a solid connection for a reasonable, well running car to replace his beta and gave him a place to live and a job, automotive repair, he decided it was a better choice to tell all our customers we were overcharging them, spoiler, we weren't, and he'd do the jobs cheaper if they'd bring it to him at his house, this was a short time after he moved out of our house, after never repaying anything he owed us, not that we'd asked, broke my heart, I had a best friend that I knew for 16 years, she got pregnant and her parents tried to kick her out, her parents wanted her to get an abortion but she refused. One of our HS friends told me someone should push her down a flight of stairs so she can miscarry. I told her that's a very bad idea and offended my best friend. The next day. The principal came by my class to ask me if I could attend a meeting about something important. If I didn't attend. I was going to be expelled. When I arrived to the meeting. Our shared friend claimed I was going to shove my best friend down flights of stairs so she can miscarry. My best friend believed her. We stopped talking after that. Been very good friends for over 2 years. Their roommate moved out and they asked me if I want to move into their spare room. I was very happy to live with my good friends and I did everything I could to be the best roommate possible. After 3 weeks they found another source of income and kicked me out. First. They offered to help me find another accommodation but the next day they changed their mind and just told me to leave by the end of the month. It was 7 days until the end of the month. They didn't spoke to me ever since. When we met somewhere in town they acted like they never seen me before. I have no fucking idea what I did wrong. My wife said she needed some time for herself so she went to stay at her mom's for a while. One day I went to pick up my kids and walked in on her and my best friend having sex. Turns out it had been going on for a while and she knew him before she knew me, which I had no clue about. Edit. This kinda blew up and I can't really reply to every comment question so I just wanted to add a few things. When I said the affair had been going on for a while. I mean for several months before I found out. This was after my second son was born. I have no doubts as to whether my kids are actually mine or not. Yes. They are now my ex-wife and ex-best friend. This happened nearly 16 years ago now. It was a very dark period in my life. But I'm great now. I got two great kids out of the relationship. I wouldn't have met my wife if this hadn't happened. Also I believe I'm a stronger person having gone through the whole ordeal. Just know that if you're going through something horrible in life and your heart and mind are broken. There is hope for things to get better. It just takes time. Had a good bud of mine. Who's the godfather of my son? Living with me and my wife. I travel a lot for work. And was out of the country for about 6 months in the Middle East. Came back and found out she was pregnant. With twins. And that they weren't mine. I booked a table for 6 people to watch a sports event at a bar. I tell them so. All 5 friends say okay we will be there. No one shows up or even has the decency call or text that they were not coming. A friend stole my Mortal Kombat 2 strategy guide in 3rd grade. I never forgave him. Eat shit. Cameron. Dude ahead. Friend only listened to me to tell all of my secrets and spread rumors about me. Fun times. Friend told me they weren't doing anything for their birthday. On the day of their birthday. Photos appeared on Facebook of them out with the rest of our friends. They're not my friends anymore. Asked two of my friends if they wanted to live together in college. Then one of them asked another person in our friend group if he wanted to join in as well. 
Then they asked another, and another. And then once there were too many people for one apartment. They dropped me out of it. No longer friends with any of them. Was kinda a wake up call though because I definitely gave way too much of myself to those people not knowing that I was the most expendable one. It really taught me not to put others on a pedestal and respect myself more and has since led to me developing far more healthy relationships that bring me a lot of happiness. A guy who seemed like a good mate when it was just us. And then as soon as there was someone else. Or a group. He took the piss out of me and tried to make me the butt of all jokes. Even worse if there were girls around. After a while. I called him out on it. And he was just like dude. It's just a joke. But I was done with him after that. I saw him randomly earlier this year. After years of no contact. And it was amicable. And we caught up a bit on how we're getting on with our lives. And while he has grown up and become a bit more grounded. There's been no intention of rebuilding a bridge. I think if I ever met someone who has that side to their personality. I'd drop them like a hot potato. In 7th grade she wrote a 10 page letter on all the reasons I should kill myself. And had all but one of my friends sign an agreement after I confided in her that I felt like something was wrong with me. Early undiagnosed depression. Go figure. The day she gave it to me was arguably the worst day of my life at the point because my parents told my sister and I that they were considering divorce. And my grandmother died. My best friend since 4th grade. Called her my soul sister. I genuinely was so grateful to have what I thought our friendship was. She fell on hard times. Got weirdly religious. And stopped working while going to her private uni. I was always there for her. Shoulder to cry on. Visited her all the time because she didn't have any friends and I knew she was lonely. Helped her with groceries and rent. Helped her family out. One day she came over and after buying her groceries. She told me a higher power has been telling her to cut me off for 2 years and she had to listen. Now she wants to be friends again. It's a hard nope from me dog. Grew up going to the same church and met my friend and her family when I was 14. We grew up together. Hung out and our families would be together all the time. Fast forward many years and I am dating a guy that I fell in love with for almost 3 years at the time. He went to ND to the oil fields for work. I went to visit him and could tell something was off a bit. Took the train from my town to Williston 22 hours to get there. Visited him for 5 days and on the last day he gets up and goes to shower. I grab his phone. We had an open policy with each other that either could be on each other's phones. I found the emails between my friend and him. My family still hangs out with her family and her. I refuse to be around or speak to her. I had some friends who were always talking crap about me. Found out from another good friend. And one day I came to school in my brand new jeans that costed around 150 euros and they put glue on my chair while I was in the bathroom. I sat on it. I asked which one of them did it. None of them said a word. We went to the principal's office and these pose had the balls to say that I put it there to get them in trouble. Their parents were called and I earned around 200 euros and a new pair of jeans. My best friend begged my girlfriend to give him a blowjob. That was pretty brutal. Fuck you. Ben. A woman I thought was my friend. We worked together for years. Our kids were friends. I helped her and her husband out when he was having mental health problems. She was in my sister's wedding party, appeared in court as a witness for my ex-wife in her bid to gain full custody. Thankfully she failed and I now have custody of my kids. I haven't spoken to my friend since. Told a friend a secret in high school. I suffer from major depression and social anxiety. Don't tell anyone. I'm seeing a therapist. That took a lot for me to say. I was making progress. Friend proceeded to tell the entire class. People thought I was crazy. That's high school. I stopped being friends with the few friends I had. I was more alone. I graduated high school with zero friends. Thanks. Don't worry though. In college I blossomed into a bearded man with no fears. Life has been swell ever since. Friend was really close with me and my girlfriend. Friend was my girlfriend's confidant while we were dating. I trusted friend because he was a good guy up to that point. Friend was constantly pinning her against me. Making bigger deals out out small stuff. 
saying I was mistreating her by not being with her constantly cause I was working a full time job while in school. Girlfriend cheats on me with friend. Friend tried to turn everyone against me. Only person who still associates with friend is girlfriend and they're getting married in the next few months. Never lend a friend money especially if they still have and pay you back from anything else they owe you. Best friend stopped talking to me after my dad died. Took the whole friend group with him. Apparently I was too emotional. I was 13. Having my entire friend group walk away from me when I was in such a shitty place stuck with me forever. Her BF sexually assaulted me and she told me that she needed space. Never talk to her again. In college. My best friend and I had an art class together with a guy I was hanging out with on the regular getting to know each other to see if there was anything more there. He and I hung out. Messed around. Had fun. Etc. Nothing formal or spoken just yet but we communicated daily. We were more than friends. But not a dedicated couple. One day I stopped by his house after a morning class for a reason that I forget. Knocked. No answer. So I'll let myself in the unlocked door, small Kansas town. Nobody locks anything, so I could leave him a note, pre-cell phones texting. At least for me. While her purse was on the chair by the door. Nobody answered when I called out his name. Or hers. His car was there. Her purse was there. They were there. Ugh. I got back at her though. Almost 20 years later. She friend requested me on Facebook and I denied that bitch. Take that. Jessica. He thought the cune I had in my room. Was fake and threw it to my back mayo. IDK if this counts but it hurt. In HS I had who I thought was my best friend. Almost inseparable. Our favorite band at the time was Good Charlotte and they were on tour. She got tickets and forced a third party friend who didn't even like them to go with her instead of me. Not saying she owed me. But if it was me. I would take my best friend who likes the band instead of someone who doesn't want to be bothered. It always sat wrong with me. Introduced my friend to my GF and she ends up cheating on me with him. I have Asperger's and as a result I seem to attract narcissists. Both my best friend in high school and my first wife were narcissists. My wife and I were having issues and we decided to try a trial separation. My high school friend slept with my wife two days after we separated. At the time I thought it was a backstabbing. But years later realized it was a gift. As I had a reason to cut two toxic people out of my life. Nothing that dramatic. People tend to abandon me when I'm at my lowest. Maybe I drive them away. I don't know. But nobody I really count on ever stays when I really need them. I was medically discharged from the army six years ago. I met the woman who'd be the mother to my child and settled down with them. Very happy. About a year later I get a call from a guy that was basically the father I never had. And a mentor in ways. During my time in the army. He asked if I could be a character witness at a court martial. Where he was accused of downloading child porn on his laptop. The CP was definitely on his computer. But that's not something I knew him to do. Of course I agreed to go. So I left my girl and my 2 month old daughter for a few days just to help this guy out. Turns out he needed a scapegoat. He was found not guilty. And all it cost was my reputation. Everyone I served with now thinks I downloaded child porn on his computer. Which lead to crippling depression. And major trust issues making it impossible for me to get close to people. True friends stab you in the front. Not the back. Oscar Wilde. I was taking a culinary class with my buddy and he walked behind me with a knife and didn't say anything. I stepped back and got mildly stabbed in the lower back. After 10 years of friendship you think you know a guy. I had one friend. I was bullied by everyone at elementary school. Because my friend would be bullied too when they hung out with me at school. We only played outside of school. One day a popular kid asked to play with me during recess. I was ecstatic. Until after a while they said you're not as bad as friend said you are. And that's how I learned why I was bullied. Cannot say we were friends when I think of it. But he was someone I hang with. I was bullied in school. Basically. I did not know how to defend myself. So it was sort of a love-hate relationship. At lunchtime. 
I was going to get my lunch as usual. Started to see kids throwing food around the hallway. I did not bother. Until I saw that my lunch was the one being thrown around the hallway. My sandwich. My food. Everything. They were all cheering. When I went to get my lunch back, or what was left of it. I was about to pick it up and my friend took the lunch out of my hands and threw it back in the party. He actually took the lunch out of my closet when I wasn't there and started this whole mess. I just left crushed. I think that ended the relationship. XD. PS. Whoa. That blew up. This story happened when I was 12 years old. I learned later that this kid was beaten by his dad at home and had to go live in the forest next to his house. In a tent. For several months. My high school friend group ditched me. And the few people, a whopping two of them, who supported me. After I called out our sort of ringleader for sexually harassing me. The worst part is that most agreed I was in the right. Two. They all just felt closer to him I guess. And thought he deserved a, well, actually. Another, second chance. Though to be honest I think at its core the issue was that I made them uncomfortable afterwards. Fast forward 3 or so years and I no longer even interact with the larger social scene we were connected to, or really any social scene, which is disheartening because it's like I was cut off almost on accident. Meanwhile, the person I called out still gets invited to poetry open mics, art galleries, and is happily supported by a lot of the same people they were back then. All while successfully in university. I'm glad they've recovered and found themselves a bit, they had some huge problems, but I reserve my right to be bitter. Sometimes I feel like it's all I have. Just happened today actually. I threw a housewarming party for myself and invited 20ish friends family over. It's been 5, 1 stroke 2 hours and no one has shown up or bothered to call. I specified no gifts and supplied about $250 worth of food drinks that'll go to waste now. Maybe not that severe but I was really close to a guy in theater when he one day just told me I was fucking annoying. And I've been much quieter since then. It's been years and to this day I try not to talk too much so I don't annoy anybody. At the beginning of summer going into high school. My two friends and I were left alone at my buddy's house. We snuck into his parents liquor cabinet and all tasted some vodka. Being that it was my first time tasting hard liquor I took one sip and instantly disliked it. I decided to not drink anymore because it was gross. One of my friends starting pounding shots even though it was his first time drinking. He had maybe 4 shots and started feeling tipsy. We proceeded to marvel at his drunken self for the rest of the night. Fast forward 2 weeks and I'm riding in the car with my mom. She begins to ask me if I have anything I want to tell her and like any 13 year old in my position I said no. She then goes on a rant about how disappointed she is in me for drinking alcohol at my friend's house and proceeds to ground me for basically the entire summer. Come to find out my friend who got drunk started feeling guilty and told his mom what he did. He was a spoiled kid and his mom didn't punish him while I on the other hand got grounded for taking one sip. Strict parents man. Oh boy. I had this friend who I used to shoot my guns with all the time. We were out in a field one day shooting my mom's in and this dumbass notices a deer and decided. Hey I should shoot that, so what does the fuck had do? Poached a deer with my gun. Had a game warden show up at my house a week later asking about it. And I just ended up telling him the truth. Luckily he didn't confiscate my rifle. Went right over to fuckhead's house and told him to get bent. Haven't talked to him since. I decided to be friends with this girl that was crying. Was okay at first. Then she started to show signs of being crazy. She wouldn't let me hang out with anyone else and when I said that I would be right back, I had to use the bathroom, she started to cry and say that I would leave her. I, being naive af, decided to stay with her. This continued until she literally punched one of my friends cause I decided to hang out with them for a day instead of her. I tried to break it off. But then she wouldn't let me. She eventually threatened to kill me and our parents got involved. The principal too. A friend of mine told me to go kill myself just like the rest of my family over me not going to his house. To clarify. I have one dead sister due to suicide. And two brothers they attempted. So let's just say I'm not his friend anymore. 
friends knew I had a crush for a girl. He kept giving me strength. A few weeks later I knew, by a third friend, they were, sort of, dating. Bottom line after all that crap was sorted out. The girl started dating the other guy. Was at a party with my cousin and his friends. I just moved so I didn't know them or anyone at the party. I start talking to this really pretty girl. We wander away from the party and start talking. Really hit it off. We kiss some and then head back. My ugly ass excited and nervous. We drink some more she gets more and more physical. We move to her bedroom. Right when I go to close the door my cousin's buddy comes up and say they need me. I'm like alright so we start walking. I turn back and see my cousin and one of his friends go in the room behind me. I was like hey my cousin just went in that room. Dude straight up tells me my cousin likes her and he was told to get me away from her. I go back to the room it's been a couple minutes. They have her spit roasted. Didn't learn my lesson took another 6 months for me to finally cut him and his shit friends out of my life. My mother told me she was sick of being with dad. She told me a bunch of things he'd done which made her afraid of him. She asked me to tell a few of her close friends about how she was being treated. Because she wanted them to understand why she was leaving. Then she decided to stay with him. So she told her friends that she had no idea what was wrong with me. But they should pray for me because it looked like I was going through something. My own mother stabbed me in the back. I remember I got a holographic Sherizard when I was a kid and I was so excited to show it off at school the next day. Then. About halfway through the day. It goes missing. I looked everywhere and I could not find it and was super bummed out. The very next day this kid named Marcello. Who I thought was a friend. Shows up with his own Sherizard. I couldn't prove it was mine. I knew in my heart that it was. The timing was just too convenient that I lost mine and then he gets one. Motherfucker stole 3k I loaned to him on a hard time he had. 10 years to fucking trash. Then started telling everyone I owed him from all the good things he and his family did for me. I hate him and his family now for being that asshole. And above that. They call themselves decent Christians. I wrote a whole novel but since this will probably get buried. I'm gonna shorten it. My used to be best friend since middle school. Jay. Moved in with my boyfriend and I. He listened to us have sex. Jerked off in practically every room in our apartment and bragged about it to one of our other middle school friends. All behind our backs. After sitting down with him and telling him how violated we felt. He seemed understanding and agreed to ground rules we set for coexisting until our lease is up. One more month thank god. But now I'm hearing that he complained to the same friend that we're acting childish and that what he did wasn't even that bad. He even got his dad on his side like WTF. I'm angry and lost. I want him gone. I let a friend borrow part of my plastic dinosaur collection. It was pretty extensive and I was really proud of it. I was in a cramped dorm and at the time I appreciated that they weren't taking up space for a few weeks. I went to her room a few days before I moved out to get them back and she locked her door and wouldn't let me in. I went back every day and sent other friends to try to get them. But to no avail. The day I moved out she wasn't home and left the door unlocked so I let myself in and she had hidden them so I could only find one. I still have my half of the collection. But still can't believe what went down. Considering we were both women in our 20s. Not a friend. But a sister. I had this enormous crush on this guy. I was too shy to talk to him and just adored him from afar. Sister says be it his secret admirer that way he can get to know you. For a month I put notes and cards in his car a few times a week. One weekend. Sis and I go out and I see him. I point him out and tell her that's the guy I'm in love with. She tells me she's going to go talk to him about me and get us hooked up. I wait for 30 minutes. She doesn't return. I go inside the restaurant they are in. Turn a corner to find her making out with him. That was a devastating blow. I was in the hospital having my first child. Two of my friends were going around telling anyone who would listen that my boyfriend wasn't the father. My boyfriend never doubted me and our son looks just like a mini version of him. 15 years and 3 more kids later. The boyfriend is now my husband and those friends have been out of our lives for a long time now. I took his chips. 
he stabbed me with a plastic knife. We're still friends though. When I was about 25. My, now former, best friend since 4th grade told me that during middle school. When I was painfully awkward and for sure the weird kid. She and my other former best friend would deny being my friend to everyone else. They would tell people that they only let me think we are friends because they feel sorry for me. Learning that broke my heart. I thought that we were so close. We hung out every weekend during school and even lived together after high school. Those were my only friends during those tough childhood years. And finding out that they weren't really my friends was so shitty. I was picked on a lot. And always took solace in having two real best friends. Even if they were my only friends. And then they stayed my friends into adulthood. Except now I'm not sure about that either. Couldn't trust her after that. A girl I knew in college invited me over with her friends to watch Supernatural or something like it. I wasn't a fan of the show or whatever. Afterwards I was like. It was alright. I thought she was fine with this. She was not. She smashed a lamp into my face. It didn't break. But it did hurt. She kept telling me how wrong I was. Her friends told me she is just like that. My best friend would tell guys to act like they liked me to prove that I would like anyone that showed interest in me. This went on for a couple years and her and her sister kept track of it in a book. She slept with my boyfriend because she thought she was in love with Emmy? Wackest shit I ever did here. Came out to a big Christian girl. Girl told her parents. Parents told my parents. She can rots in hell. Was in the midst of a messy breakup. Friend told me he was there for me and that he knew I was hurting and that shit wasn't all my fault. Basically he was there to listen and keep me from losing my shit etc etc. Tried to call him up on Friday night, couple days after he said all that. Couldn't get him on the phone. But oh well. Friday night and all. Ex called me the next day all confessional and told me she'd hooked up with him and she was sorry and that she knew it was a shit thing to do. Called him. Asked him all innocent like how was your Friday? What did you get up to etc? Just all casual. He was nervous but managed to stammer out some lie. I called him out on it and told him I knew what he was doing. Fucking my soon to be ex-wife. He got all sorry sorry dude on me. Fuck that guy. Never spoke to him again. Can't come back from that. Wasn't even the fucking hoe that got to me. It was the lying. Friends don't piss on your back and tell you it's raining. We were getting ready for a party. They told me to go to the store to get blunts while they were breaking my quarter ounce of weed down. I went and came back. Apt was locked and everyone gone. I lived with them so I was knocking on the door for their mother to answer. Not a single thing for 30 minutes. It's late at night and cold. I slide open the window and immediately the mother goes off on me. She was standing there not answering the whole time. So after all of that we get into a massive argument. Everyone comes back from the party and they smoked all of my weed before returning. They didn't even reimburse me. Then I had to move that weekend because of the fact that I tried to enter the house through the window. Bringing this up just made me upset because this was one of those things I put aside and did nothing about. My roommate. Whom I had supported through and basically coached to finish his first marathon when no one else showed up. He worked behind my back to get my GF to break up with me at the time. First in a long line of people to betray me and for reasons I can never understand. My best friend successfully picked up my boyfriend, then said she was doing me a favor. Because if he really loved me, he wouldn't have responded positively to it. Paid for a Euro trip with the terms she would pay me back over the course of a few months. Our friendship ended during the trip and she never paid me back. 2k down the drain. A friend's family fell on hard times. I had an emergency fund and let them borrow a 5 digit amount of money to swing their mortgage and groceries. A few years go by and there's no attempt at paying me back. The couple gets divorced and life goes on. One day the dude emails me and shows me an ad for a classic car for $11,000 and asks me what I think, he knows I'm into cars. I give him my opinion. But add at the bottom that maybe he might consider paying me back before spending money on frivolous toys, he already had two cars. He went off on an angry two page rant about how his ex-wife was the one who fucked me over and he was ripped off much worse. Blah 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 and then never talked to me again. 
It was an expensive lesson to learn to A. Never loan out money you can't afford to lose and B. If it's friends and family. Give them the money. Don't loan it. It's not worth risking friendships over. I'm still owed that money and it's been 15 years. My best friend of 4 years in high school sucked my boyfriend off on the night of my graduation after my 18th birthday whilst I was passed out on the same bed. I had been playing in a metal band for many years. When I left it I wanted to take a break from playing guitar. But I didn't want my instrument to be left unused in a corner so I left it, with my amp, pedals and all equipment, at my bass player's house so he could use it. Of course. This lovely guy took it all with him when he moved to the other side of the country. When I learned by someone else that he was gone, because he of course had not warned me before going. Do I have to say he of course never answered my phone calls and texts? 20 years after. I still think about it every day because. Not only was it a rare model I could never replace. It was my very first guitar. I had bought it to a friend of mine who died a few months later so it was a very important object to me. Why? What a fool I've been to think you would simply be honest to me. After all these years we had spent playing together. My 20 year friend decided to start gaslighting me despite knowing I have extreme anxiety issues. I begged and begged him to cut it out for 4 fucking years, but he wouldn't and when I asked why he said it was funny watching me get upset. I didn't want to lose my only friends but I had to make the decision to be alone and mentally sane. They still blame me and shit on me behind my back. Evil motherfuckers. My friends told me to grieve better after my boyfriend died. He accused me of sexually assaulting his younger sister who was basically my little sister too. At the time. It's completely false and it's the most mind boggling thing that's ever happened to me. A quiet girl I made friends with would only sit with me in class just so she can go snitch about me to my ex-friends. She would literally sit next to me for one or two classes, randomly, then go sit with them, later. I called her out on it after she came to sit next to me and told her why do you even bother sitting with me, when we both know you're just trying to get shit to talk about me with them. When I come back from the bathroom you better go sit somewhere else, I was usually very quiet and that was the first time I stood up for myself. Thanks for watching mate, make sure to smash that star button for more high quality content.